Bible, turn with me to uh, Genesis 39. Genesis 39. We leave Jacob, we'll go to Joseph. Genesis 39. And there's a lot I'm skipping here, obviously. Genesis chapter number 39, verse number 1. And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, sold by his own brothers into slavery. Don't tell me how bad your childhood was. I don't, I don't want to hear it. And don't tell me how bad your parents were. I don't want to hear it. You're talking to the wrong person, man. Uh, say, well, you don't know my childhood, and you don't know what happened to me. Can't compare to what happened to Joseph, man. First of all, they wanted to kill him, and one of his brothers talked the other brothers out of it, and they decided to sell him while the other brother was gone, and they sold him as a slave, and he ended up in Egypt. You don't got it that bad. You, your mind is the problem. Your, your, your thinking is the problem. You live in the greatest country in the world. You have two good hands, two good eyes, two good feet. One good foot, maybe, you know. Look at what it says. Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard in Egypt, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph. God can be with you. I don't care if you don't have a penny in your pocket, man. I don't care if you have no, nothing to your name, God can still be with you. What a great God, amen. He, he was, and the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. <laughs> he had nothing. He was a slave. You know, when you have God, you have everything. And too many times when you have everything in the world has to offer, you, you, you block God out or God's blocked out. It's almost like you can't see the stars when the daylight is, is here because the sun blocks from the sunlight, gives you so much light, you can't see the stars. Well, that's how it is with salvation a lot of times with God. You have so many things that you're concerned about and consumed about that you forget about God. But I'm telling you, you lose everything in life. You lose your husband, your wife, your children, your parents, your health, your money, and everything and all your friends. Maybe then you'll see God. Amen. Maybe then you'll, you'll be able to focus in on, the, on God. But the Bible says he was a prosperous man, and he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. Yeah. And his master saw that the Lord was with him. He was a slave. Joseph was a slave. And Joseph's master saw that God was with Joseph. Do people see that about you? Huh? It's hard to see that in you if you're a complainer. If you're a murmurer, if you're a backbiter, if you're a tailbearer, if, if you're always criticizing everything, it's hard to see God in that. But if you're always happy and loving people and sweet and kind and patient and you're concerned about the loss, people will see that, ladies and gentlemen. It doesn't say that the master was saved. It doesn't say Pharaoh was saved for sure. But he saw something in Joseph that he said, you know what? God's with him. Look what it says. His Verse 3, his master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord had made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph, hold your place there, go to uh, uh, Psalm 1, please. Psalm 1, might as well read it right now. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. All that he did to prosper. Everything he touched, prospered. We need somebody to touch the furnace. Amen. Psalm 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither. Watch this. And whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. That, that truth is not limited to Joseph only. That truth is to every believer, ladies and gentlemen. Whatever, it's like, you know, the, the old uh, um, mythological, uh, whoever uh, touched something and always turned to gold. Who was that Greek uh, thing? Midas? Midas? Midas, yeah. Everything he touched would turn to gold because that's what he wanted, right? Until it, he touched food and turned to gold, he couldn't eat it. Well, the truth of the matter is, in God's, in God's book, the person who loves God and fears God and obeys God, whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. I don't care if you're at the wrong employment, you can prosper there. 
I don't care if you're in the wrong state or the wrong city, you can prosper there. I don't even care if you marry the wrong person, you can prosper there. If you love God. If you love God. You can't control what happens in Troy. I can't control what happens in New York State. I can't control what my wife or children do. I can't control any of that, but I can control everything inside of me, how I react to that. And whatsoever you do, it shall prosper. The ungodly, verse 4, the ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. Well, you're either living for God or you're not. Most people got one foot in the church house, one foot in the world, one foot with God, one foot with the devil, and they think, you know, I'll get whatever I can from God and I'll get whatever I can from the world. God ain't going to bless that. Let's go back to Joseph, uh, Genesis 39. Genesis chapter 39. Genesis chapter number 39. Again, verse number 3. His master saw that the Lord was with him and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight and he served him. And he made him overseer over his house and all that he had, had he put into his hand. That's quite a statement. Joseph's master saw that God was with him. Whatever Joseph did, God prospered him. Can, can that be said of you? Whatever you do, God's prospering you. You know what? We're all guilty. Let's just admit that. Amen. Let's just be honest and say, you know what? I listened to the world too much and I made a wrong decision. I listened to people and I, made, I, I went to the wrong places. I just be honest. But if we decide to obey God without favor of man, without fear of man, God has promised to prosper everything that we do. Keep reading. Verse number five, and it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake, like Jacob, same thing. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand and he knew not aught he had save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. And if you know the story, Potiphar's wife laid eyes on him and tried to entice him so she could sleep with Joseph. Joseph ran out of there. She lied. He tried to rape me. He put him in the dungeon, put him in jail, in prison. Joseph didn't do anything wrong. Well, guess what? God prospered him even when he was sent back into the dungeon, into the prison. Because no matter where Joseph ended up, he loved God. And by the way, Joseph is a picture of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm just telling you. He was sold for 20 a uh, piece of silver, Jesus sold for 30 pieces of silver. I mean, the, the, the likeness and the, the picture, the type is too, too unmistakable to miss. I'm telling you, Jesus was blessed. He gave it all. He died on the cross. You would think from a human standpoint, from, a, from, a, from the world standpoint, he, he was uh, a failure. He, he uh, uh, taught, preached did miracles, ended up at the cross, dying on the cross, just a handful of women and John standing nearby. That's it. From the world's perspective, he was a failure. But not from God's. It doesn't matter where you're at physically in life. It matters where your heart and mind is at. Look at chapter number... That same chapter, let's go to cha uh, verse number 21. This is after Potiphar's wife lied. And by the way, women will lie and men will lie. And they'll try to, they'll try to disparage you and they'll try to dig up. Did, did they bring false witnesses to Jesus or not? Did they bring false witnesses uh, for Paul or not? So they did. And they're going to lie about you. If, you're, if you decide to live right, they're going to lie about you. You know what you need to do? Love God anyway. Love God anyway. Verse 21. But the Lord was with Joseph in the dungeon, in prison, and showed him mercy and gave him favor in the sight of the keeper of the prison. And the keeper of the prison committed to Joseph's hand all the prisoners that were in the prison. And whatsoever they did there, he was the doer of it. Huh. The keeper of the prison looked not to anything that was under his hand because the Lord was with him and that which he did, the Lord made it to prosper. Doesn't matter when he was a teenage boy living at home. Doesn't matter when he was in the pit uh, begging for his life. Doesn't matter when he was sold into slavery. 
Doesn't matter if he was taken down to Egypt and it became a slave. Doesn't matter if Potiphar bought him as a slave and brought him into his house and took care of everything. It didn't matter if Potiphar's wife lied about him. It didn't matter if he went back into the dungeon. It didn't matter at all because Joseph loved God. You can love God in 2023. People may leave you, but you can still love God. You may lose your health, but you can still love God. You can lose all your money and all your possessions and still love God. Do you love God this morning? Or, or is it something in life that you need to love God? Is it something uh, terrestrial? Is it something earthly? Is it something uh, worldly? Is it something physical that you need to love God? That's shallow, man. It's selfish. That's selfish. We are selfish people. Uh, Genesis 45. Continue with Joseph now. You know the story. If you're saved, if you've been saved for any length of time, God blesses Joseph. He's now Pharaoh's second-hand man. Right-hand man, really. He's in charge of all of Egypt there. And uh, now he saves his family from, fam from famine. They come from Canaan there. And he feeds them. And now we come near the, to the end here, Genesis 45. And verse number, uh, oh, let's go to verse number four, I guess. Well, this is when Joseph reveals himself, verse number three. And Joseph went, said unto his brethren, I am Joseph. You got to understand, this is like 20 some years later, man. 20, 30 years, I forget exactly the timeline. This is 20, 30 years later after they sold him into slavery. He says, I am Joseph. Doth my father yet live? And his brethren could not answer him, for they were troubled at his presence. And Joseph said unto his brethren, Come near to me, I pray you. And they came there and he said, I am Joseph, your brother, whom ye sold into Egypt. Now therefore be not grieved nor angry with yourselves that ye sold me hither, for God did send me before you to preserve life. Do you realize things happen in your life that you think are untoward or bad, that God has pre-planned? planned ahead for you to be a blessing down the road to somebody else? And you get upset at your boss, your wife, your husband, your children, your parents, uh, somebody else in life, your neighbor, you get upset at them, not realizing that God is leading the way for you to be a help and a blessing down the road in the future. It takes a lot of character for Joseph to still love his brethren. It takes a lot of character for, to love somebody who wanted you dead. Do you have that in you? I mean, can you turn the other cheek? That's, Christ, that's called Christianity. Can you pray for them that despitefully use you? Can you bless them that curse you? That's called Christianity. Well, I'm going to pay them back. No, that's not in the Bible. God will pay back. God's the avenger. He said, God did send me before you to preserve life. For these two years had the famine have the famine been in the land, and yet there are five years in the which there shall neither be earing nor harvest. And God sent me before you to preserve you a posterity in the earth and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So now, so now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. The man that had so much insight, so I know you meant it evil, but God meant it for good. Can, can you imagine saying to the people, I know you wanted to kill me, and you, wanted, you sold me into slavery, and I, I ended up in the dungeon, I ended up as a slave, and Potiphar's wife lied about me, she sent me back in the dungeon, but God meant it for good. <laughs> could you say that? What good could come out of Stephen being stoned to death? Unless the Apostle Paul was standing next to him, consenting to his death, and his conscience was bothering him, Seeing Stephen, a godly man, a righteous man, a holy man, being stoned to death, having done nothing evil, nothing wrong. What good can come out of the stoning of, of, of the first martyr of the New Testament, Stephen? I want to remind you an old statement. I know, I ho hope, hopefully I don't botch this up. But the saying during the Dark Ages was, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. I'll repeat that. The blood of the martyrs, not you killing somebody, them killing you. You know what James says? They resist you not. God's people. 
The seed, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. What good can come out of it? Revival everywhere else. Everywhere the Roman Catholic Church was trying to burn it out, stamp it out, uh, uh, just blanket all across Europe, trying to torture them, burn them at the stake, it was growing like wildfire. I don't know of any other nation, maybe the, some of the Muslim nations, but other than the Muslim nations, I don't know any other nation that has hated Christianity and persecuted Christianity more than communist China. But that underground church is growing, ladies and gentlemen. I said growing leaps and bounds. It's against the law to me. It's not, they're not authorized churches. They're house churches. They don't have buildings. They don't have own property. They meet in homes and basements in the field somewhere. But they don't know how to stamp it out because you can't stamp it out. If you love God, if God be for us, who can be against us? We have our, our mindset, on, you know, it's the mayor that's fighting us and the city council that's fighting us and the, the governor that's fighting us and the president that's fighting us. Congress, they hate us. Well, if God be for you, who can be against you? We don't need a building. We need God. We don't, we don't need a, a, a thing. We need God. And Joseph got that. And the, the test of his Christianity is at the end here. It'll be three things that'll make things come out of your heart and your mind. Three things. When everything goes great, when everything goes lousy, and when you're drunk or high. That's when people talk because it comes out of your mouth. What's in your mouth, uh, what's in your heart is going to come out of your mouth. When you're angry and you got uh, uh, nothing, when you're poor and you have nothing, uh, when you're rich, you have everything. And when you're drunk and high, that's when truth comes out, what's in your heart. Not truth, but whatever's in your heart is going to come out. It's going to come out. Guess what? Joseph, at this point, had the power to kill all the people who wanted to put him to death. That wanted to kill him, his own brothers. But he said, God meant it for good. God meant it for good. Look at this. Verse number 8 again. Verse number 8. So now it was not you that sent me hither, but God. And he hath made me a father to Pharaoh and lord of all his house and a ruler throughout all the land of Egypt. Wow, what a statement. Uh, look, look at uh, verse number uh, 27. Look, let's go to uh, verse 25. And they went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph, Joseph is yet alive and he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. And they told him all the words of Joseph, which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons, <laughs> which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob, their father, revived. Look, it's not, it's not a matter of pride. It's not a matter of, boy, even proving how good, righteous, holy, or obedient you are. That's not the point of it. But when others see your wagons coming, you say, wow, God's blessed that man. And it does something to the hearts and minds of other people. So, wow, God's blessed that person. Can they say that about you? Do you have any wagons? Do you have any covered wagons? Do you have any cupboards that have food in it? Do you have anything that you can help somebody else with? You know, it's amazing. God used Joseph down in, J uh, down in, uh, in uh, Egypt because he knew a famine was coming. Hey, there is a famine of the Word of God today. And so well, why did uh, you come to Troy, New York? Well, I came for selfish reasons because I thought God uh, wanted me to start a church. That's selfish. It's a good selfish thing, but, I, you know, God, I yielded myself, I surrendered. But God knew there was going to be a greater famine in, in 2023 of the Word of God. I didn't know that. I used to, I used to listen to uh, um, Brother Roloff and, and Brother Hiles and others say, you know what? Another 5, 10, 20 years, you have no idea how wicked and evil society is going to be. And I used to sort of play it off, you know. Tell you what, man, they were right on the money, man, right on the money. Brother Hiles said years ago, at a, uh, obviously, at the pastor school, one of his sermons, he said, and, you know, you're talking about, you people think are exaggerating. He says, you're going to have to go thousands of miles to hear anybody preach against anything that's, that's wrong. Well, right now, it's hundreds of miles. But soon, it's going to be thousands of miles. You go to the Middle East, you've got to go thousands of miles somewhere. Yeah. 
thousands of miles. Well, you know what? God sent us. We're here together because God knew, God knew what the future held for Troy, New York. God knew what the future held for your family. You're the, you know, you're the only light that lost people at work know about. You're the only light in your family that, that uh, they know about. You're the only light in your relatives and in your circle of friends that they know about usually. You're the only Bible that they ever see. They're not going to pick up a Bible and read it. They're going to look at you. And God sent Joseph as a slave beforehand to spare all these people. Thank God Joseph had the right temperament. Chapter 47. We come to the tail end here. Verse number 5. Genesis 47, verse number 5. And Pharaoh spake unto Joseph, saying, Thy father and thy brethren are come unto thee. The land of Egypt is before thee. In the best of the land make thy father and thy brethren to dwell. In the land of Goshen let them dwell. You do whatever you want. I've got this underlined and start in my Bible. If thou knowest any men of activity among them, then make them rulers over my cattle. Men of activity. God doesn't use people who sit down and twiddle their thumbs. God doesn't use people, you can say, you can get upset all you want, who sit down and play video games all day. God's not, going to sit, God's not going to bless people who are lazy on welfare, social services, and want to feed off the government. God does not use any of them. God blesses them just, the fact, just by the fact that God blesses everybody. And God makes it rain on the evil and the righteous at the same time. But God's not blessing them unless they're men of activity. They're busy doing something. I'd rather run out of time trying to do everything than have so much time in my hand I don't know what to do with it. How can you say that you're saved and you're bored? Amen. Why would you ever, that is an indictment on yourself when you say I'm bored. When you're bored, you know, no one have ever, you know, do with this what you want. And I, I try not to act like I'm boasting because I try not to do that. But no one ever has to remind me about reading my Bible. No one ever has to remind me about prayer. No one has to remind me about soul winning. No one has to remind me of coming to church. Absolutely no one. I feel guilty if I don't read my Bible. I feel guilty if I don't pray. I feel guilty if I don't come to church. I feel guilty if I don't go. So I feel guilty about it. Don't you? How can you say you're bored? Don't you have a Bible to read? Don't you pray for people? Don't you hand out gospel tracts? How can you say as a child of God that you are bored, you have nothing to do in life? If I was crippled, I'd pick up a phone and call people at random trying to give them the gospel, man. If I couldn't go anywhere, I'd beg people to take me somewhere. But not today, man. God's people are lazy and selfish, man. Exodus chapter number one. Marching through. Exodus chapter number one. This is why men hate this kind of preaching. Yeah. They're lazy. They, they'd rather watch a stupid bowl, drink their beer, get drunk, you know, beat their wives, kick the dog, uh, eat the, the cat for Chinese food, whatever they want to do. But they don't like this kind of preaching because it reveals how shallow they are. They don't want to have a job. They want to force their wife or their girlfriend to go get a second job. You know. Exodus chapter number one, verse number 11. They're in Egypt now, 400 years. Therefore they did set over them no, no, the original says government workers. The original says social workers. You got to read the original Hebrew, you know. <laughs> Hebrew, you got to read it. Therefore they did set over them taskmasters to afflict them with their burdens. And they built for Pharaoh treasure cities, Washington, D.C. and San Francisco. Python and Ramesses. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied. How can you criticize the government instead of criticizing yourself? Say, so, well, the government limits my ability. To, no, God's limitless. You limit the Holy One. The same government that limits you limits everybody else. The same government that passes regulations passes those regulations to everybody else. But if you're a child of God, you have God inside of you that God will give you wisdom to know how to deal with all that 
crap that the government dishes our way, all the regulation, all the red tape, all the bureaucracy, everybody has to go through it too. You're not alone. So here, at least in this case, the Egyptians put taskmasters over the Israelites, the Jews, not the Egyptians. These people are being persecuted. You're not. You, you're, you haven't been arrested for, for uh, being a Christian. They just let, they, they set taskmasters over everybody. Yeah. You know why they shot that balloon, right, over South Carolina when it got to the coast? They wouldn't shoot it when it came into American airspace on the West Coast. They wouldn't shoot it when it went over, over the west, western states of Montana. And they didn't shoot it over the eastern, southern part of the United States. They, they shot it when it was over the ocean and off of South Carolina. You know why? Because it was getting too close to Ukraine. Yeah. But look what it says, verse number 12. But the more they afflicted them, the more they multiplied and grew, and they were grieved... Because of the children of Israel. Ask a question. Hey, fundamentalists, let me ask a question. How come, how come the Amish are multiplying and fundamentalists are not? Amen. Why are the Mennonites multiplying and fundamentalists are not? Amen. Well, I'll tell you why. Because fundamental Bible colleges teach men and women in their college, don't have any children for the first four, five, six years. Make sure your wife go gets a job and pay your bills and, and work in the ministry. In independent, fundamental Baptist colleges and universities. And you'll be left few in number, the Bible says. Huh? But the more, the more they persecute them, the more they, they multiply. And the Egyptians were greedy. They didn't know what to do to stop them. Chapter 21. Exodus chapter 21. We're marching through on money, finances, Work ethic. Now this is going to get you. If, if you don't love God and love the Bible, you're not going to like this one. Exodus 21. Exodus 21 and verse number 28. We're going to read it slowly because I know some of us have public education. Exodus 21, verse number 28. Uh, verse 20, 28. If an ox gore a man or a woman that they die. Then the ox shall be surely stoned and his flesh shall not be eaten, but the owner of the ox shall be quit. Because, you know, it wasn't his fault. He should be clear. In other words, quit means you're clear. Verse 29. But if the ox were wont to push with his horn in time past, and it hath been testified to his owner, and he hath not kept him in, but that he hath killed a man or a woman, the ox shall be stoned, and his owner also shall be put to death. That's kind of severe, Well, If you had a pit bull and you know it attacked on somebody else and it killed somebody else after that, God says you ought to be put to death. I'm just telling you. I'm glad I have chickens and goats that can't kill people. <laughs> and I've had calves before. I haven't had large cows or cattle uh, or ox. But when you have large animals like that, you better be careful that you keep them penned in because you're responsible for any damage that they might do. So I like small farm animals, personally, because they're easier to take care of and, and uh, you know, I, I, just, I just like it. Now here's, now, here's what you're not going to like. The very next verse. The very next verse. Because you live in, two, in 2023. You don't live in 1611. You live in 2023. And even fundamentalists, I've never heard somebody pr preach this or mention this. I, I just, you know, I know I'm a pastor of this church, but I've gone to a lot of uh, conferences. I've gone to a lot, a lot of uh, sermons online. I've never heard somebody ever mention this kind of verse at all. If there be laid on him, the man that has an ox that killed somebody else and he knew it was a danger to somebody else. If there be laid on him a sum of money, then he shall give for the ransom of his life whatsoever is laid upon him. You know what bothers me? That, that ignorant, self-righteous, hypocritical, self-righteous people criticize the rich getting away with everything. Well, money answereth all things. 
and because you're too stinking lazy to get a job, and you're too stinking lazy to work a second job, and you're not right with God, and God doesn't bless you, God says, if the guy's well off, he can pay a ransom instead of either, in the other verses in the Bible concerning this, going to prison, jail, or his life being taken. He said, well, that's not fair, pastor. God is not fair, boys and girls. But God does bless rich people who had a mindset to work and you didn't want to work and you didn't want to have any money. They say, it's not right. It ought to be applied to everybody. And God does say that and you had a right to work too. And you had a right to make some money and earn some money and save some money and invest some money. But you want to hypocritically criticize and I don't even care if they're politicians or not. I, if, you know what bothers me? It bothers me that politicians and, and sports players and even Hollywood actors, and I don't like all these people. You know, I, don't, I hate to say these disclaimers all the time. But it bothers me that the self, selfish, hypocritical um, accusers come out five, ten years later and blame a politician, a sports player, a musician, or a Hollywood actor or actress 10, 20 years later, that bothers me to no end. And then you get upset, well, because he had a lot of money, he was able to get away from, uh, get away from the charges. All right. What do you do with Exodus 21, verse number 29 and, and 30? What do, what do you do with that? You should cut it out? Because money answereth all things. Yeah, but they were able to afford a good lawyer. Well, why can't you afford a good lawyer? Why are you so envious at other people that have money? Why are you so greedy and want to knock, knock down people that are well-to-do? For what reason? They're the ones that own factories and build factories. They're the ones that own uh, shipyards and build shipyards. They're the ones who invest millions and billions of dollars into whatever they desire to. Why should you be upset at that? And it gives you jobs and employment. Why would you be upset at that? If you don't like your boss or your employment, why don't you go out and start your own business? It's that simple. You're going to find out what the taskmasters in Washington, D.C. will put you through when you start your own business. When you start your own store. When you're self-employed. Then you'll find out how evil Washington, D.C. is. Right now, you're getting paid and either an hour uh, uh, by the hour or you're getting a salary. And you're just happy that you're getting paid money. But you have no idea what your boss or the owner of the company, the owner of your, your plant, you have no idea the paperwork they go through just to keep you employed. And you criticize the boss, you criticize your employer instead of the taskmasters in Washington, D.C. Just reading the King James Bible. Chapter 22. Not that it has much to do with the sermon, but since it's in the way there, we'll read it, verse number two. If a thief be found breaking up and be smitten that he die, there shall no blood be shed for him. Amen. Of course, you have to put an asterisk in there that says, except for New York and California, you know, Massachusetts and uh, Vermont and, and Rhode Island and Connecticut and all the other God-hating states. But if somebody comes into your house stealing something and he dies and you kill him, God said, good riddance. Amen. Nothing should happen to the homeowner. But not in New York State, man. They're going to persecute you. Yeah. I forget, what, I forget where it was. Oh, I think it was Houston. I couldn't remember. Remember that one guy about three, four weeks ago, maybe one or two months ago, maybe three months now, he was in a restaurant, and I think it was Houston, and a, and a guy came in, and uh, it, was a, it was a toy gun. They didn't know at the time. Came in and demanded everybody's money, you know, and, uh, and everybody forked over their money. The one guy that was, uh, had a gun on him, he, he, he put his money out. And when the guy, the, the, the thief, had his back to the other guy, the guy took his gun out and shot him seven, six, seven, eight times. Just unloaded the whole thing and, and killed him. Didn't realize it was a toy gun until afterwards. In Houston, Texas, a grand jury was impaneled to see whether they should charge the guy, shooting the guy that everybody thought had a gun. That's Texas. What do you think they're going to do to you in New York, man? I mean, look, as much as I don't like police departments, the first thing they do about every single investigation when somebody is killed in police activity is take them off the beat. Why? Only for political reasons. Only because of political repercussions. 
You can have the, you can have the, the savages burning down cities, and God forbid a police officer has to defend themselves. The first thing they do is they put them on desk duty. Or they take him off the beat. For what reason? He could have done nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong, maybe. Do the investigation while he's on the beat. It tells you how everybody is paranoid today. Everybody's walking on eggshells. So, oh, we just want to make sure everything's clear and we want to make sure we're safe. You have time to do that during an investigation. You know, what the, you know what's wrong with us? Our mentality. It's hard for you to understand this. You know what we had before we had the Defense Department? You know what it was called before the Defense Department? It was called the War Department. <laughs> the Defense Department used to be called the War Department. Now we can't even shoot a balloon down from Ch Communist China. Do you understand how far we've gone? Do you understand how stupid we've gone? All right, let's finish with this. Exodus 23, verse number 8. Just in time for next Christmas. And Easter bonnets and gifts. Exodus 23, verse number 8. And thou shalt take no gift. For the gift blindeth the wise and perverteth the words of the righteous. That's why, if you know this, when, when some other leader of a country gives a gift to the President of the United States, he's not allowed to take it with him. I think it's kept either in the Smithsonian Institute or some other building or some other um, place. The President of the United States is not allowed to keep any gifts from, from foreign leaders because they're afraid that they're going to influence the American President somehow to favor that foreign nation. Of course, unless you're Hunter Biden. Right? Unless you get billions and billions of dollars from, from China, communist China or the Ukraine, then they just look the other way. God says don't take a gift because it'll blind your, your mind and your heart. It'll blind you. And it'll pervert the words. When you know somebody is good to you and gives you something, then you're less apt to criticize them or be upfront with them because you know they're going to give you something. A gift can be, I mean, who doesn't like gifts? They're free and they're kind, and people are kind, and they're not doing it because they're mean. They want to be a blessing or help. And I'm not saying it's wrong to give gifts. I'm not saying that. You better be very careful that God, God's right and we're not. Let's all stand. Dear God, thank you again for loving us. Thank you, Lord, for the word of God. Thank you, Lord, for uh, teaching us this book about work, finances, money, the work ethic. And Lord, help us to be busy, men of activity, uh, living for thee, working for thee, and doing what we can before the trumpet sounds. In Jesus' name, amen.